actually a, a, a large overlap between the production team of Caprica and Battlestar. Um, there was a lot of the, the key department heads are the same, uh, a lot of the crew is the same, uh, some of the writers, some of the staff, you know, maybe 60 to 70 percent, kind of depending on which department we're talking about. So, and, you know, it's at the same uh, physical facility that we shot Battlestar. It's not, it's not the actual sound stages, but it's sort of across the street. Yes. They're very proprietary too. That's a good thing about it. They, they, you can tell the love they had for Battlestar. It's like they're the child of Battlestar, so they yeah. did take it. They sweat all the details. They, yes. they, yeah. In the first season, we did have one. We had one team of writers, and then we had uh, I'd have to count. I think five or six was probably the writer's room, you know, and the rest of them were all individual writers, but they all, you know, we all break stories together, uh, chip in on giving each other notes, you know, it's, all, it's a very collaborative sort of uh, equation, we, which we did on Battlestar as well. Ultimately, but I really handed over the reins uh, to Jane Espenson, who uh, show ran the, the first half of the season, and then Kevin Murphy was the showrunner for the second half of the season, and the buck kind of stopped with, with them. Okay. Very happy with it. I mean, I don't think I've uh, I've had any second thoughts about it at all. I, I know that there's people that continue to debate it, but to me, that's great. I mean, okay, I'm I'm glad that it's it was, you know, it had enough punch that people got upset or, or cared passionately about it one way or the other. But I, you know, I was very pleased with the the finale. I really liked the script. I, I loved the the way the cast performed it. I liked the the final cut. And yeah, to me, that that was that's the end of the show. The worst response is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> very true. The difference. <laughs> no, my cameo at the end was a little too much. No, it was great. It dude. was sort of like I, th I you know, he said I want to be the guy holding the magazine. I kind of pictured it. You know, I would you would sort of see a little bit of my face. And when, in the, when I saw the footage, and it's like me, <laughs> and Baltar and Six. And I was like, Is there any other coverage of this? No. Now you know how we feel. But I'm thinking, Reimer did that on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, they haven't told me, but you know what? They never tell me about that kind of stuff, so I always find out the last minute. But I, I don't know of any plans for extra material or anything like that. You never know. Yeah, you know, his name is certainly somebody that we'd be interested in working with again, and uh, it was a scheduling problem then, and probably, you know, we'll have to see what the schedules are again in the future. I don't Fine. think it's that far off. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know about walking robots, but... There was the guy that created the sentient... Uh... It was like a sentient cell. There was something in the news a couple something, of weeks ago. Something, yeah, yeah. Scientist. I... I, I, I it's easy for me to see in, within my lifetime that mm -hmm. suddenly people, will, there will be an announcement that somebody created a sentient computer somewhere. There'll be some silicon mind someplace on this planet and none of us will be prepared for it and no one will know what the hell to do with it once we invent it. And then will come an existential crisis for all of us. Do we kill it? What do we do? <laughs> yeah, what happens if we turn, oh if we pull the plug? If we murder yes. this thing, does yes. it have a rights? I mean, yes. I, I can see that those issues will loom for us, and probably well before we're prepared for them. I think they'll have the same rights as children. I put you in this world, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. Right. that's what Mom always said, that's right. <laughs> there is a big sci fi thing. I'm big trying to recall, I think it might have been Jane. I think Jane Espenson uh, knew his some of his uh, stand-up routine, <laughs> and I I, ca I remember being in the writers' room and somebody pulling it up on uh, on a laptop, and us <laughs> listening to it, and it was very smart and very funny, and we just kind of said that's an interesting sensibility, and then one thing led to another. Yeah, I mean, part of that's baked into the to the to the show, in that yeah, fundamentally it's about humans and then their creation, the Cylons, and there's this you know, this mirror that sort of echoes through the whole show of these of these pairs looking at one another and also trying to decide humans and their children and humans mm -hmm. and their children and humanity's children and their literal children and you know it's, it's there's a lot of that you know all through the show. But 
Well, we sort of made allowances to do that in, in Caprica, whereas in Battlestar, you know, at the beginning of Battlestar, in the miniseries, we didn't, weren't going to show any of the Cylons, the Centurions at all. And they were thrown in really at the last minute in that opening sequence, and then we didn't really see them again for a while, but they were so popular, and we really liked them that we started mm -hmm. developing. There was a lot of R&D of the visual effects crew to figure out how to really realize them on a television budget. So that took a while to figure out on Battlestar. And also just Caprica, you know, the technology moves forward, thing, effects get faster and cheaper, and you know, so you're now able to do it. Right. And we just have a different show, and we set it up in a way that we said, okay, we want to have more silence insurance in the show, so how can we make that possible? So. You know, I, I had a problem with that at first. I was like, how is that going to work? Yeah. Because it, it, it's a little jarring. And then you think about it, you know, and you read it, and you go, okay, well, are we back and forth? But I have to say, the editing really, and, and you guys really did a great job. My only issue, if I could bring it, is <laughs> height of yeah. eye to eye. That's yeah. the one thing. You know, you're looking at the, an eight foot girl, yeah. or you're yeah. talking exactly. to yeah. a five foot girl. And we cut it, and like, yeah, Eric will be looking this, and on the next cut, he's doing this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we and we actually had those debates sort of internally and talking about how to, at what point do you just sort of break the reality for the audience, which is really what you're doing. Because in reality, Eric, uh, Daniel is always looking up mm -hmm. at this at this Cylon, but for the audience's point, of, for Zoe's point of view, she's perceiving him looking into her eyes. Mm -hmm. And we talked about, okay, the other option would have been to put Zoe on a, on a box, because she's just not that tall, and have her literally up at the same eye level as the Cylon. And then we just thought, that's going to look weird, because yeah. she's suddenly going to appear to be seven feet tall. And it was just one of those things we thought, you know, I bet the audience won't care. We'll get away yeah, with it. And really then, good. like, you know, people like us kind of notice those things, yeah. go, does that make any sense? But it's one of those things that most if, people... If you're think. consistent with it, yeah. It becomes, you know, the, you, you can extend the disbelief thread, you know. Great cast. Yeah. Top to bottom. It really it's is. Really great well, cast. it's because I'm here, but <laughs> <laughs> yesterday it was like, mm, with the exception of some people. Except for the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Who you calling bottom? <laughs> Actually, in New Cap City is mostly real stuff, and then the green screen, I get, or the flying mm -hmm. uh, Zeppelin. Zeppelins yeah. and the fighter pilots that, you know. Right, okay. But it's just so wonderful. Yeah. I, I couldn't wait to get to that, because you're in a video game. Yeah. Even the style of acting, you yeah. know, everything is more intense and, and kind of cartoonish. Mm -hmm. And when we'd see the playback, it was like, wow, look at the metallic aspects of it. I mean, it, it looks like the... That style of Sin City, you know, yeah. kind of, that's, I don't know what you call it, but, uh, I, you know. Very noir sound. Very, yeah, but uh, video game noir, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, so it's heightened realism, and uh, I, I just, I love it. I'm a big kid. You know? <laughs> Don't know. They, 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 again, I will learn the date when I read it on a blog somewhere. No, but it's definitely <laughs> coming back. We can. You'll probably well, the, well, the second half. <laughs> yeah. 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 The second half of the season is definitely going to be broadcast. It's just mm -hmm. kind of a question of when. And I think it's probably going to be in the fall. I've heard a couple of different dates in the fall. There's the outside chance that it could be the first of the year, but I think it's pr most likely going to be in the fall.